So here is an example of a hypothesis test that we looked at in a previous tutorial. And using p-values, we found that the p-value was equal to 0.03 and so on, which was less than 0.05, which was the significance level. And therefore, we decided to reject the null hypothesis. Now, using critical values, and given the fact that we saw in the previous tutorial that this was a lower tail test, we need to find the critical value CV that satisfies this probability, that the probability of all observed values less than or equal to our critical value is exactly equal to 0.05. And we can work out this value directly in the calculator by using the inverse normal distribution function, which you've seen in previous tutorials. For this method, we need three values, the significance level, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, and the population mean. Now in the question, I've highlighted the key values that will help us to figure out these parameters. I've also drawn the normal curve, which represents the sampling distribution of sample means in this particular example. Using the highlighted figures, we have that the population mean is equal to 69 and the variance is equal to the variance of the original distribution, 16 squared, divided by the sample size, 25. Okay. And shading this region to be the significance level helps us to better visualize that we are looking at the lower tail. Let's go ahead and work out the critical value directly from the calculator. So first we need to go to menu and then for distribution, we need to click on seven. To get the inverse normal function, we need to click on three. Since the significance level is 5% and we are looking at the lower tail, it means that the area should be 5% or 0.05. For the standard deviation, Please note that the standard deviation we need to use is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution and not the original distribution. Hence why I've explicitly labeled this diagram using the sampling distribution. Okay. So the standard deviation will be the square root of this value, which is 16 divided by five or 3.2 and the mean we're going to use mu is the population mean which is 69. So working this out we get that the critical value is 63.736 and so on which we can label on the diagram and therefore the critical region which is represented by this purple line would be defined as a set of values that are less than or equal to 63.736 and so on. So now we have our critical region. In order to decide whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis, we need to see where the observed value of the sample lies relative to the critical region. Now the observed value in this case was 62, which lies within the critical region, as you can see on the diagram. And therefore we can say that since the observed value of 62 minutes falls inside the critical region, we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay. And just like the previous tutorials, you will then need to complete this hypothesis test with a conclusive statement, which relates to the context of the question. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to learn how to use critical values to choose whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. Looking at the next example, which was also one we looked at in a previous tutorial, using p-values, we found that the p-value was equal to 0 0.32 and so on, which was greater than 0 0.05, the significance level, and therefore we chose to accept H0. So let's draw a diagram to illustrate the sampling distribution using the highlighted figures. 
we have that the mean is equal to the population mean, 4.73, and the variance is equal to the variance of the original distribution, 1.21 squared, divided by the sample size, 50 in this case. In this example, we also concluded that this was an upper tail test. And this is why we shaded an area of 5% in the upper tail of this diagram to represent the significance level. So using critical values, we need to find the critical value CV such that the probability of getting observed values greater than or equal to this critical value is equal to 0 0.05, the significance level. The inequality goes in this direction because it's an upper tail test and it's extremely important to determine whether it's an upper or lower tail test. And you'll see why when we use the calculator to work out the critical value. So using the calculator, we need to go to menu, press seven for distribution, press three for the inverse normal function. Now for the area, since the significance level is 5% and we are looking at the upper tail, you need to be careful in this case. Inputting a value of 5% or 0 0.05 would be incorrect as a calculator would read this as the first 5% of the data, in which case would actually be the lower tail. So in order to get the correct critical value for this upper tail, we actually need to tell the calculator to read the first 95% of the data. And therefore, we need a value of 0 0.95. Okay. For the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we need to take the square root of this value, which is 1.21 divided by the square root of 50. And for the mean, we need to use the population mean, which is 4.73. So working this out gives us a critical value of 5.011 and so on. And we can show where this critical value would lie on the diagram. So now we've found the critical value, we can therefore define the critical region, which is illustrated by this purple line. And it's defined as the set of observed values that are greater than or equal to 5.011 and so on. Now in this question, we found that the observed value which came from the sample was 4.81. And since this value is less than the critical value, it would lie to the left of the critical value. Now since this lies outside of the critical region, we can come to the conclusion that since the observed value of 4.81 falls outside the critical region, we would accept H0, okay? Looking at this last example, which we've also solved in a previous tutorial, using the p-value method, we were able to find that the p-value was equal to 0.033 and so on, which is greater than 0.025, which was half the significance level. And the reason why we halved the significance level was because we were asked to test whether there is significant evidence of a change in the mean diameter. And by looking at the keyword change, we were able to establish that this was a two-tailed test. And so since the p-value was greater than the significance level, we chose to accept the null hypothesis. So let's draw a normal curve to illustrate the sampling distribution and show that this is a two-tailed test by shading both tails with an area of 2.5%, which is half the significance level. And given the highlighted values, we can label this distribution with a mean of nine, the population mean, and the variance of 0 0.15 squared divided by N, the sample size, which was 30. In the previous tutorial, we've discussed that to use the critical value method for a two-tailed test, we need to find the critical value for the lower tail and the upper tail in order to then define two sets of disjoint critical regions. So let's start with the lower tail. Now, in order to 
calculate the critical value for the lower tail, we need to find the critical value such that the p-value is equal to 0 0.025. And the inequality goes in this direction because we're looking at the lower tail. So let's use our calculator and the sampling distribution to work out this critical value. So first we need to go to menu, click on seven for distribution, click on three for the inverse normal function. For the area, as it's the lower tail, we can simply put in a value of 0 0.025. The standard deviation would be the standard deviation of this distribution, the square root of this value, which would be equal to 0 0.15 divided by the square root of 30. And the mean is equal to the population mean, which is equal to nine. So working this out, we get a critical value of 8.946 and so on. And we can show where this would lie on the diagram. We can define the first critical region to be the set of observed values that are less than or equal to 8.946 and so on, which is illustrated by this purple line, okay? Lastly, we need to calculate the critical value for the upper tail, which is the critical value such that its p-value is equal to 0 0.025. We're looking at the probability of all values greater than or equal to the critical value as we're now looking at the upper tail. So using the calculator and going straight to the inverse normal function, the area in this case, since we're looking at the upper tail, wouldn't be 2.5% or 0 0.025, rather it would be one minus 0 0.025, which is equal to 0 0.975. We need to use the same standard deviation for the sampling distribution, which is 0 0.15, divided by the square root of 30 and the same population mean which is equal to 9. And working this out gives us an upper critical value of 9.053 and so on, which we can also add to this diagram in the correct position. So now we found the critical value we can now define the other critical region to be the set of observed values that are greater than or equal to the upper critical value of 9.053 and so on, which can be illustrated by this purple line. So now we have our two sets of disjoint critical regions. We can work out whether to accept or reject the null by looking at what the observed value was in this question. Now the observed value from the sample was found to be 8.95, which lies somewhere in between the critical values we've just found. And so we can say that since the observed value of 8.95 falls outside the critical regions, we would accept H0, okay? So I hope you found this tutorial useful as a different approach to hypothesis testing. Keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.